Good morning. This is Shomna Chattopadhyay from IIT ISM Dhanbad, the Department of Mechanical Engineering. We are going to discuss today about metal casting with special emphasis to the sand casting phenomena. We are discussing about casting. There is an ease that it is a very important process. It is also a very old process but lot of technological modifications have taken place in period of time but still it is very much relevant to produce complex and complicated shape and uh, metal is used in order to melt uh, and produce uh, to give the proper products made of metal. The main advantage of the casting process is that it is melted to make a fluid and the advantage of making a fluid is that it will take the shape of all those cavity where it is poured and after solidification all those complex shape it will be attained and once it is taken out of it and it will be the product. That depends upon all sorts of things, post processing, depend upon the accuracy and surface finish of different casting process. But here now we will only concentrate about the sand casting process and their different kind of features associated with those process. So it is a typical, a typical molten metal. Molten metal is poured into the sand mold. It is in a liquid state and they are put it into the sprue and from the screw it goes to the, the channel and that is called the runner and then they are entering into the mold of the cavities where it will be properly filled and then solidified. The mold is made of the sand and the advantage of sand is that it can retain its shape at elevated temperature. Even 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000 uh, years ago, the human civilization are aware of this kind of process and they have started all those things like say Indus civilization of Harappa Mohanjadara, they know also the casting process but definitely with non-ferrous alloys. The Babylonian civilization 1776 BC. They are also utilizing that Sumer, Mesopotamian and uh, the Egyptian civilization also have some along with the Chinese civilization knowledge about those casting process. So the sand casting mainly why it is sand casting the reason is that the molding material is sand and they are used a pattern. What is pattern? Pattern is the replica of the object which is to be produced. So it is made of wood most of the times it can be made of metals and plastic. It is easy to give shape all those mill part and on the mill part then molding sand is poured together to give the proper shape then this part is removed to prepare a cavity and this cavity is utilized in terms of pouring those molten metal into that and after solidification that kind of shape will be generated and with some post processing the finished product will be coming out of it. The first one is the strickling off. First the pattern that uh, that part is known as the uh, pattern. There is a half pattern why it is a uh, split type of those things top part of the mold box is called cope and the second bottom part is called the drag. Why it is splitted? The reason is that we have to remove this pattern. If the pattern remains there, then there is no space for the molten metal to enter those kind of cavities. So removal of the pattern is necessary. Pattern is reusable and the mold for the sand casting is not reusable. That is why it is called sacrificial mold or expendable mold based casting process. That means every time we have to crush the mold but not the pattern. There are some kind of casting process where we have to sacrifice the pattern like say investment casting. We will not going to take out those material, we just melt it out 
and that is every time we have to make the pattern and that is known as sacrificial pattern based casting. But mainly sand casting is expendable mold based casting but reusable patterns are used. And the pattern retrieval strategy also should be there and that is why most of the cases the split patterns at the half an part they are used with a cap, cope and drug formation will be there in order to remove the pattern and create the appropriate cavities. The first one is that we have to put all those things in the drag, drag the lower part of the mold box and the pattern and when pattern is uh, put together and then the in the top part of it the sand will be there and when sand is appropriately packed it is trickling off from the excess portion and then we have to put all those uh, in the form of just like pattern that is sprue pin. The sprue will be used uh, in order to accommodate the passage of those molten metal into those kind of cavities. So this is called the sprue pin and these uh, patterns will be there and that has to be then the pouring basin and all sorts of things the configuration will be created and the pattern will be removed and those sprue pins and other things will be removed in order to create all those tunnels and the mold cavities as it is revealed from the picture and it is vented the reason is that the trapped gases and other part of it will come out from those moles because of elevated temperature uh, the gases will come out and we have to provide some passages of all those gases to come out otherwise they will create some kind of blow holes. Blow holes is a very very uh, unwanted things that is the casting one of the very prominent defects of those sand casting and that is resulted uh, because of those uh, uh, not escape route the gases. So, we have to provide appropriate vent holes so that the gases, trapped gases can escape and so that the casting is uh, defect free. And the last part is that the molten metal through the sprue has to be poured in so that they can enter into the cavities of those mold and the cavities uh, the molten metal will because of its fluidic property it will go to the nook and corner of all those cavities and they will be solidified and once they are solidified uh, then we can remove those things those sand and other things as it is expandable so it will be just uh, destroyed and then it will be removed and then the post processing will be there in order to make those final product. And to introductory part we have to say that there is no substitute for good fine sand casting for metal casting. Still lead sand casting is very very relevant. The sand, the silica, the refractory material it will retain its shape and not get deformed at elevated temperature that is the beauty of those sand and it is quite easily available so we can use those things in order to use as a mold. And the experiments with the use of common foundry sand, there are common foundry sand, they have the properties, they have some kind of constituents and other turn, other properties and prove to be completely disappointing for packing and retaining the shape when dry. So it is not easy to make those uh, retention of the shape when it is dry. So some kind of strategies are used. And casting of sand is the simplest and the most versatile of all casting methods used to produce used to produce uh, the various shapes and sizes and various types of sand used in casting process. We have different classes of sand and they have their own applications. So these different types of sand casting have their own advantages and disadvantages. Nothing is uh, free from any kind of problems. So every every choices have some advantages and disadvantages we have to know that and the type of metal required to be cast influences the additives and gradation of the sand is to be used the different kind of additives like some molasses as the binders another part so that it can retain its shape because dry sand to retention some kind of complex and complicated shapes not an easy task so people are using some kind of binders like say molasses another part or organic some material in order to ensure the binder 
blending of the grains with each other and on the basis of that it will retain its shape in terms of those cavities. So, different sands are used, some of the most common types of casting sand used in the Hawaii foundries and other things are green sand, green sand means the moist state, green is because the water is there, the natural which is available and some synthetic because they are mixed with many kind of uh, additives and other part of it, those are called synthetic sands. Then another one is oil tempered sand because of some very specific properties, this coarse sand because coats are used mainly in order to create the hollow shape. So coarse sand different properties are there, we have to create all those coats inside those part of it to create a hollow shape and then after, after the casting process this coarse sand will be uh, removed. Coarse sand has a different property than the molding part of the sand, its main idea is to create those hollow shapes and it will be remain there in those cavities to form those hollowness. Otherwise, what will happen? We have to machine it out and that is a very costly procedure. So, it is always better to use appropriate coats so that the hollow shapes are appropriately formed. Then sodium silicate are also used, baked binders and all sorts of things are used in the form of sand. So, green sand, this is the typical picture of green sand and why it is green, I have already told that some moisture content is added into that, so that the binding with each other is, is ensured and that is why it is called green sand. So, binding is uh, very much ensured because of this moisture content, so it can retain its shape if it is dry enough, so sometimes retention of those intricate shapes is a challenge. So, in its simplest form green sand constitutes of sand, obviously sand it is, so water because it is green and some clay, clay is used as a, some kind of grinder, a very very fine particle and particles and all those things are responsible for binding all the sands with that. And good choice for hobby professionals, green sand requires less equipment to work with. We can easily give shapes and all those part and it will retain its shape comfortably. Almost all sand cast molds for ferrous castings are of the green sand type if we, we are using green sand to deal with those ferrous things and ferrous things are constitute uh, a good amount of constituents of all those materials and products and green sand can be a good option as a molding sand to cast all those ferrous material. So, green sand can be categorized into two main types, one is natural and another other one is synthetic. And the natural sand is the one which is obtained from the ground, straightway available from the bank of the rivers and other places where the rivers are responsible to produce all those grains of sand by their age old water, water jet uh, flow related to different kind of rocks and crushing them together to form all those natural green sands. And characteristics of natural sand may vary depending on source it was obtained from, from which source it is taken and depends on that their character, their constituents and one can use those things in the terms of uh, making it appropriately suitable for molding. And the clay content will be maybe say 11 to 30 percent and the clay is generally kaolin the typical material which is responsible for binding all those grain signs and other part uh, to retain its shape. And synthetic green sand, uh, the sand is more commonly practiced these days because the sand means some clean graded sand where controlled their grain sizes with some kind of mesh and different layers of mesh are used in order to get all those things and these mesh numbers are associated with and they gradually they are refined together where some uniformity of the gray signs, size and distribution will be obtained and which can be added as the desired one. And this type of sand palm is the user to more closely control the attributes of the sand. Whenever the distributions of the shapes and all those things are uniform, so it is easier to control the um, casting process if they are made of those kind of controlled sand that is synthetic green sand. And types of clay, clays are also of different types, there are two basic types of 
uh, clay which one can add to the sand cowling or fire clay. This is western bentonite and the southern bentonite because of the source and their classifications. I am not going into much of the details of that. So, they are have some properties and on the basis of that they are chosen as the binding agent. And what are the properties of clay? These different clays have their own advantages obviously. Every choice have their own merits and demerits and bentonites are generally preferred over other types of clay because they are high bonding power. Because we have to have some strength of those sand. Because with the molten metal with some, some kind of um, flow uh, and dynamic behavior, there is always a possibility that the intricate shapes of the internal cavities of the mold get destroyed. So, the retention of those uh, mold is required and where bentonite has a big role to play in order to bring together the bonding strength between those grain structures related to that and that is important, that is very, very important so that uh, the intricate shapes are maintained. If the intricate shapes of the mold are jeopardized while pouring out the molten metal in full flow, the casting will be defective. So, retention of shapes in the sand is important and bentonite has their own role to play. So, green sand gives two advantages. Uh, green sand means less clay and required to give the desired strength and hence the sand will become permeable. So, now there is two things we know. We want the strength of the sand as well as the permeability. Permeability means that we are allowing the entrapped air to go for that. If the mold is very much permeable, then definitely the entrapped gases can have a good root. But the problem is that if it is more permeable, the strength of the sand will lose. So, permeability and the strength of the sand, we have to make a combination. So, it will be a combination, com it will be a very good combination to give the desired result. Just like a team selection, if we have um, 10 batsmen in a team, while batting they are great, but while bowling they are bad. And if we have 10 bowlers in a cricket team, while bowling they are excellent. But the problem is that whenever batting, they are vulnerable. So, we have to make all those signs similarly permeable as well as strain. So, we have to make a compromise. Permeable enough to escape major volume of gas to escape and strong enough by the binding agent so that it can retain its shape while flow of all those. Uh, flow of all those uh, molten metal, they will not jeopardize the strength of it. And this is a judicious combination of these two properties. And as there is, uh, there is less clay, less water is required to get the sand to the point where it has the desired strength and it means that there will be less gas generated and the sand is more permeable, it will escape easier. So, sometimes bentonites and other things will be responsible for generation of gas at elevated temperature. So, clay can take care of all those bonding states with the minimum possibility of the generation of gases. So Western bentonite gives greater dry or hot strength. Hot strength means strong enough even at elevated temperature. Hot hardness means hard enough even at elevated temperature. So, hot means at elevated temperature. So, western bentonite gives greater dry or hot strength than the other two types. And the southern bentonite is known for the superior green strength. The green strength means uh, strength at, uh, at the temperature, at the temperature even when the moisture is present. When the moisture is present, it will give lot of strength and greater permeability also, uh, so that the escape of the gas is there. It is a good compromise of all those things. And due to this reason, southern metronite or a mixture of the two is preferred for aluminum casting. So, different casting, different metal casting require different kind of uh, character of those molding sand and aluminum casting require a very specific combination of these two in order to ensure good quality of casting. Different metals demand different kind of properties from the molding sand. And this is the oil tempered sand. So, oil is also 
a player inside the sand and these oil tempered sand has a special binder instead of the clays. Uh, it is a typical binder reacts with the oil instead of the water like previous clays and as there is no water involved there is no steam produced. Problem is that if those green sand and the moisture is present at elevated temperature when molten metal come in contact with this green sand those immediately those moistures will be vaporized and it will be converted to steam and whenever steam is generated they need some escape route and if the escape route is not appropriately provided it will create all those blow holes than the surface and different places there will be defects in casting. So people are very very fuzzy about those kind of defects because the standard sand casting is associated with 27 defects and one of the major defects is blow holes. So people are very much bothered about so that the gases have some kind of escape route and especially if the moisture is present poss possibility of generation of the steam and if they are trapped inside they will generate different kind of blow holes and that will jeopardize the property of those casting. So due to this there is a lesser need for venting of the mold and hence the sand does not need to be as permeable. The advantage of oil is that they have less water, less steam generation and less permeability requirement in case of using oil tempered sand. And as the sand can be less permeable, a finer mesh of sand can be used that will result in a finer finish of the cast parts. When the grains are finer, so it will be very much consolidated and less uh, permeability required because of the oil tempered sand so that the finish of those casting will be great. The finish is always a big issue in case of sand casting. So, a lot of machining, a lot of post processing has to be done of the sand cast products. So, if we can go for finer grains with all tempers and mold, finer finish will be obtained and that is required that means less post processing will be done and that is very handy for the manufacturer. And moreover, as there is no water to evaporate in case of all those less moisture present because of the oil tempered sand, it will stay functional longer even if it is not sealed in a container. So their shelf life and all those things are better. But there are disadvantages of oil tempered sand. The sand needs to be mulled when one is first making. Mulled, appropriately mulled, you require a lot of effort to go for the mulling action. Initial mulling one can get by with some aerator or uh, fluffer and all those things, gadgets in order to do that. So mulling is ensured and which is very much required for oil tempered sand. And there are a few people who have designed their own molars, they have found to be good enough. So sometimes dedicated design, customized design is required in order to go for moving activity in a, in a big casting house. And there is a possibility for the oil vapor to ignite also because oil is there and oil is inflammable. And at any point of time it catches a fire, it will have lot of safety hazards. And if the mold is taken, shaken too early, there is a possibility of getting ignition and this is not a very likely to happen. However, one should be aware of these kind of hazards associated with dealing with oil and the fire hazards are very much there. So if one of the working is with low temperature metals have some way to mull the sand and there is lot to prefer oil tempered sands because high temperature there is a possibility of the oil will catch fire. So low temperature melting point, low melting point metals and other things where oil tempered sands are preferable. Different brand names for the binder of oil tempered sand are available in the market because casting is a very extensive process and there are a lot of players in terms of manufacture of all those oil tempered sands providers of all sorts of things and they have their own properties depending on the original and equipment manufacturer or original sand manufacturer practices by the vendors. And this is the core. Core is responsible for creation of those hollow, hollowness of those casting because sometimes it is required and the machining is reduced. That is the advantage of having a core sand. So among the various kinds of binders available for coarse sand, most commonly used are the sodium silicate and baked core. A lot of great strength is required because the sand will be there surrounded by all those molten metal. 
so it will retain its shape it will not blow away by those molten metal so its binding has to be appropriate and here Beck sand is referred to low technology sand that is available to average uh, sometimes uh, not so high high part of the technology but it is required in terms of creating all those holes advantage of this type of backed core is low cost and easy availability because sometimes economic issues are also very important role to play in terms of selection of those sands so sodium silicate it is a liquid it is also used as some additive which one mix with co sand and for this one it needs plain clean sand mixed with the sodium silicate to give the property and when the sand is packed in the core box the core requires to be hardened so not only it is packing you require a certain kind of strength the reason is that the hardenability is important because that will be surrounded by a lot of molten turbulent flow of metal and that can jeopardize those things blow away all those core sands and the problem is that if it is blown away the geometry of those hollow sections which are intended to be produced will be in problem. So the core can be hardened by just leaving it exposed air where in carbon dioxide will harden it, carbon dioxide is a hardening agent, one can put those things in the open air at that time the hardening of the core depends upon all sorts of geometrical how much it is exposed to the wire, how much uh, air, how much it is exposed to the carbon dioxide environment and according to that the hardening and other part will be there. And there are some ways to get carbon dioxide, one can find a tank and a regulator from a welding supply shop, all those tanks and other things people can use in order to go for the hardening one. And these core sand can be highly expensive if one making few cores. So, if it is mass production, the cost will come down. So one can design some sort of adapter in order to make the use of small carbon dioxide cartridges used to paint and pellet all those things, technicality in terms of taking about the scaling factors and addition of vinegar and baking soda produces carbon dioxide That's a good measures of chemically produced carbon dioxide and simply request to control whether the gas goes and on the basis of that it is done. So benefit of those things is that don't require the certain kind of uh, hazards of preparation of the open and it will be simple and cheap and the cores produced from this method will be precise in the core box and important accurate castings can be made. So the main properties associated with the molding sands are strength, yes it has to be strong enough so that the molten turbulent flow of molten metal will not jeopardize the intricate shapes prepared in the mold. So hold its geometric shape under the conditions of the mechanical stresses. Who will give the stress, stresses? The stresses will be from those molten turbulent metal flow. The permeability is the ability to send up to permit the escape of the gases as uh, we have discussed that gases are the big problem in order to create those blowholes which is a very standard effect associated with the casting process. So people have to find it out that sand has to be permeable enough. Then moisture content, moisture content inside affects the molds. If it is more moisture then it has the possibility of the steam and then the permeability will be issue. Less moisture it will be vulnerable. So that can be a compromise. One has to judiciously use these moisture content to be used for casting process. Then flowability capacity of the sand to flow into those intricate parts of the pattern surrounding to create. If it is not flowable, one has to mule and all those things hard enough, strike hard enough in order to ensure the flowability. That is an issue. If the bonding strength is more, the flowability is late. If the flowability is more, bonding strength will be. Then again, one has to bring some compromise formula between the bonding strength and the flowability of the sand. Then grain size, grain size has a big role to play so that is why people are using some kind of mesh, mesh numbers, find it out what kind of the size will be suitable for what kind of strength and grain shape also very difficult to control the grain shapes uh, and their adherence to it each other has a big role to play, how round they are and there are different categories and sometimes not a very easy way to control those grain shapes. There are three type of shapes, round, angular and sub-angular 
and they possess the different kind of strength capability, but creation of different kind of uniformly different grain sizes is always an issue. And they have the relationship with the permeability and the and the strength issues. So they have their different properties. The next one is the collapsibility. It has to be easily collapsed after the casting so that we can take away the sand from the product itself. If it is not collapsible enough, it, one has to take a lot of effort in order to remove the sand. Because sand is not the intended product, the product is the, the metal part. So we want that sand should not adhere to the surfaces of those products. So ability of the sand mixture to collapse under force is important. Greater mold collapsibility allows the metal casting to shrink freely as it solidifies and without the risk of hot tearing and cracking. If it is not properly collapsing, the different kind of defects like cracking and other things will come into. So collapsibility is a very important factor relative to the properties of molding sand. And the refractory strength, the mold must not melt, burn or crack as molten metal is poured in. It is at elevated temperature. There the strength has to be retained. And that is the property of the refractory material. The ceramic material will provide refractory strength. And it measures the ability of molding stand to withstand extreme heat. Even at elevated temperature, it will retain its strength and other part. And that is absolutely important, the property of the molding sand. And reusability. Reusability is important for the economic issues. Every time we, if you discard those things, it will be a costing affair. The ability of the molding sand to be reused after sand conditioning to produce other sand casting in subsequent manufacturing operation is utmost required because then we can do all sorts of casting process in an economically viable way. So how much we can reuse those things also have a very important property of judicious decision of selecting the molding sands. So that is all uh, we are going to uh, have discussed to recapitulate that we have discussed about the basic methodologies of casting and then we have discussed about the different kinds of molding sand and their properties, typical properties and what are their utility what those properties lead to, what kind of uh, significances in terms of providing good, precise, accurate casting related to that and we have discussed all those things at length and there are some gadgets in order to ensure, measure the different kind of properties associated with those molding sand. And uh, thank you very much for your patient hearing related to those introductory discussions of casting and mainly the properties of the sand. Thank you.